What's up, YouTubers? Hardworker12 here. This is my 2017 Subaru WRX STI. I've bought this car brand new. It had 21 miles on it when I took delivery, and it just hit 30,000 miles a few days ago. I've already had the 30K service done on it. So today, I'm uh, going to tell you what this car has been like to live with for the last 30,000 miles. Let's check it out. Okay, so first of all, this was kind of a dream car for me. Um, I can remember being in college and reading, I want to say it was the April 2001 uh, issue of Road & Track Magazine where they reviewed the first US spec WRX, the Bug Eye WRX, and I was just blown away. I thought it was the coolest car because it was affordable, it was fast, I think 0-60 to 60 at the time was 5.7 seconds, which is a lot. Well, it's a lot, a little, whatever. Um, it was fast, it was affordable, it was all-wheel drive, it was a stick shift, and it had a 6CD changer, and it was like 25 grand at the time. Thought it was so cool. Then a couple of years later, the first US spec STI comes out. Six-speed manual, um, no radio from the factory originally on the, on the first STI for the US spec cars. Not a lot of people remember that. Save weight and 300 horsepower, which at the time in 2004, that was a lot because a Mustang GT only had 260. And of course, now my car has 305 horsepower and a Mustang GT has like 470. So the horsepower, Subaru hasn't really kept up with the times. But regardless, this was still a dream car for me. I had the opportunity to get one in 2017. I traded in, I had a Forester XT at the time um, that I liked but I didn't love because I'm not figured out I'm not really an SUV guy so traded in the Forester XT leased this STI and I have loved the car loved it um, driving wise the acceleration is fine for the street it's very entertaining depending on what source you read the 0 to 60 is somewhere between 4.6 and 5.1 seconds, whatever. It's it's quick, it's quick enough. Could it use an extra 50 horsepower? I'm gonna be honest with you, yeah, it could. But what this car excels at more so than the acceleration is the handling. The handling on this car is just spot on. It has so much grip, so much mechanical grip. It just, if you accelerate through a turn, you just feel it clawing at the road. And it's so much fun. Um, you're really involved in the driving experience. The six-speed manual transmission is close ratio. The gearing is short, which means you hit the red line quicker, which means you're shifting gear a lot when you're driving this car compared to, say, a standard current generation WRX with the six-speed transmission that has different gear ratios from this one, different engine. You're shifting a lot more in the STI. And if you like a stick shift car, which I do, it's a lot of fun. It, it's, you're very involved in the driving experience. The handling is phenomenal. The grip is phenomenal. It's a really, really capable car. And it makes you feel like you're a better driver than you are because it's so easy to control. I just love it. Um, from a practicality standpoint, the car's perfect for me. I don't have any kids. I have a girlfriend. She likes a car. Um, couple of different times we've put four total people four adults in here all the luggage in the trunk everyone went to Vegas you know real little road trip had fun no problems uh, we have a, a pit bull mastiff dog that's about 90 pounds put a sheet on the back seat hump her up in there she's happy to ride in the car no problems For practicality wise I mean it's a pretty good sized compact sedan at the end of the day yeah it's fast and it's got three limited slip differentials and it grips like there's no tomorrow but it's still you know a nice sized compact sedan so it is pretty practical you know if you had a bunch of kids or a bunch of cargo you needed to haul around it might not work for you but if you just have kind of the regular wants and needs out of an automobile that most normal people have practicality wise it's going to be fine reliability car has been extremely reliable uh, it's never once left me stranded had a problem no real issues with it the only the only things um i have had early in the car's life i think at the 6000 mile service and again around 11000 miles 
I had four wheel alignments done on it because the alignment wasn't quite right. That's something in my experience that's kind of common with these STIs. The alignment can get out of whack a little bit. Um, so that was the one kind of unscheduled maintenance thing that I had. The only other thing that's ever gone wrong with it at the 24,000 mile service, the service intervals are every 6,000 miles on this car, and I've done them all on the dot. At the 24,000 mile service, the right one of the right rear wheel bolts or something was seized and they figured this out when they were rotating the tires i don't know i didn't even know it was an issue but they replaced it under warranty and whatever so i've never you know had a problem with the car leaving me stranded not starting issues like that just a couple of alignments and some weird wheel bolt that got replaced under warranty so reliability has been great for me if you read Consumer Reports, they say that the reliability, predicted reliability on a WRX slash STI is below average. I actually think the car is pretty reliable. I think it's the owners that are unreliable because people get a hold of these, they beat the hell out of them, you know, they modify them, and then they have problems. And, you know, that might be your fault if you have one of these things that has problems. I'm not saying Subaru has never built a bad one. I'm sure there's some that came out of the factory with issues. Um, but from what I've seen in my experience in approximately the seven years that I've worked at Subaru dealers, usually if something goes wrong with a WRX or an STI, the, it's somehow, you know, the car's been modified, the car's been beat up, something like that. That's typically the case. And in my experience, because I drive this car and I've driven it hard, but I've never launched it, I've never taken it on a track, but I will put my foot in it. Um, never modified it, dead stock, I haven't had any issues. So that's, that's my experience with reliability. Your mileage may vary and a lot of it may depend on what you do to your actual car if you buy one of these as far as the reliability that you're going to see on your vehicle. Uh, let's go over my 30,000 mile service just so that you would know. Um, 30,000 mile service on this. They did the oil change, of course. I had my windshield wiper blades replaced. If you have a Subaru, you may not know this, but your three-year, 36,000-mile factory warranty covers wear and tear items. Brake pads, windshield wiper blades, light bulbs. One of my alignment services was free, the first one, because they'll cover an alignment under warranty. I had to pay for the second one because they only cover one. Um, they'll cover a clutch. On paper, as long as you haven't abused it, they'll cover a clutch. But I've seen them cover them even when the car was clearly abused. Um, brake pads, brake rotors, covered under the three year 36,000 mile warranty. So my 30,000 mile service, uh, wiper blades replaced for free. I had the, uh, obviously the oil change, tire rotation, engine air filter, uh, the interior in-cabin air filter, those were both replaced. And then on the STI, a brake fluid exchange is also part of the 30,000 mile service. So I had that done as well. Um, the specs on the car, my brake pads, driver's side, let me see here. Okay, my front brake pads for both the driver's side and the passenger side are currently at five millimeters. I'm on the stock brakes and I've never had them replaced. So I've got five millimeters left on the fronts. Weirdly, my rear brakes are down to three millimeters. So it's kind of strange. It looks like, I don't know if the pad thickness from new is different on the rear brakes than the front brakes, but it doesn't make any sense that my rear brakes would be lower than my front brakes because typically the front handles the majority of the braking, but that's where the measurements are. My tires, I have nine thirty seconds of tread depth left on all four tires. Now I wanna talk about the tires. I'm not riding on the stock tires. Um, those were removed. I put about 11,000 miles on the stock tires. They've been on and off because I have family in the mountains up in South Lake Tahoe and I go up there for Christmas every year. So the stock tires on this car were high performance summer tires. I believe they were, were they Dunlop Sport Maxes on this car? I think they were. And um, I replaced them with Sumitomo HTRASPO2 tires. 
Um, and these tires have been great for me. They make a little bit more noise, but not much than the other ones that are not all season. Give up a little bit of grip, but not much. Really, it's not that big of a difference when I've swapped between the two sets. And I've put about 19,000 miles on these Sumitomos, and I've still got 930 seconds of tread depth left. And they're very good in the snow, and they're very good in the rain. Um, so if you're looking for an all-season tire for a WRX or an STI, or any car, I guess, and you don't want to break the bank and you need a performance tire, these Sumitomo HTR AS PO2s I recommend highly. They've been they've been great for me. Fuel economy is what it was supposed to be. Um, this car actually has a little gauge that tracks the lifetime fuel economy for the whole car. Right now it reads 20.6, 20.6. Now, these gauges typically read a little high. Uh, in my experience, between one and 1 1.5 miles per gallon high is what gauges like this typically read. So real world, the EPA ratings on this car originally were 17 city, 23 highway, 19 average. So even if I back my 20.6 that the car says I'm getting down by 1.5 miles per gallon, I'm at 19.1. I'm getting exactly what the EPA rating average mile per gallon said that I would get. On occasion, I've even done better than that. Um, I did some hypermiling in this car. And if you're interested, there'll be a link at the end of the video for you to watch that video. Um, so yeah, in conclusion, I love this car. It's on a three-year lease. I've got about six months left on the lease. I may do something I've never done before, which is extend it because with Subaru leases, you can just call them at the end and they'll give you an automatic extension for six months one time. So I may just extend it, keep it for another six months because it's been a great car for me. I love driving it, and I don't like the idea of giving it back just yet. Um, so yeah, that's my experience with my 2017 STI. It was a dream car for me. I've loved it. I expected it to be great, and I would actually say it's it's surpassed my expectations a little bit. Um, so if you're thinking about getting one of these cars, if you've always wanted one, if it's within your means, I highly recommend it. You won't be let down. They're a lot of fun. Um, I actually love the engine in this car, famously at this point amongst internet car people. Uh, this car still has the old, old EJ25 engine. I think the original design dates to like 1989, obviously with many, many upgrades and updates over time. Um, the engine, Jeremy Clarkson said on the Grand Tour, something along the lines of, if you're gonna love a car, it has to have flaws. And I'm not gonna say that the engine is flawed in this car, but it has a certain feeling to it. It has a personality. It's not happy below 2,000 RPM. It's very happy above like 4,000 RPM. If you set the cruise control at 80 miles an hour in this car in six gear, you're pulling like 31, 3,200 RPM, and you can just hear it. It just wants to go faster. And it almost has an exotic feeling to it because it is, you know, it doesn't like low revs, it loves high revs. Um, so I like the engine a lot. It's old, it's inefficient, it probably needs to be replaced. And it kind of hurts me to say that because it's a great motor. Could it use 50 more horsepower? Yeah, it could. Could I get 50 more horsepower out of it if I wanted to modify this car? Yes, I could, but I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna mess my warranty up and it's a lease anyway, so. Why am I gonna mod the car? Um, but I really like the engine. You know, Don't believe all the hate that you read online that it's a piece of junk and whatever, whatever. It's old, it's not the most up-to-date thing in the world, but it just has a feeling to it. And it's a it's very entertaining. It's a lot of fun. So that's another thing. Don't If you're thinking about a new STI and you're thinking, I don't want that EJ engine, don't knock it till you tried it, because they're fun. It's a cool motor. And if you are into modifying it, there's a bajillion, million, trillion parts out there to do it, because really, since that 2004 STI first came out, they really haven't done much to change it. So the bad news is they haven't really changed it much since 2004. The good news is, there's a million parts out there and it's so well developed and everything. So engine's great, car's great, handling's great, reliability's been great, it works perfect for my life, and I've loved the car. So that's my 30,000 mile update 
on having a WRX STI. Somehow the novelty still hasn't worn off. I love this thing. I even love the big obnoxious wing. You can see it there in the, <laughs> you, can, you always see it in the rear view mirror, the big wing, but it's cool. I like it. I mean, it give, you know, it, again, it's, it's an STI thing. When you see the silhouette of the car, you know, you know, it's an STI because it's got the big wing on it. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you. Leave a comment if you feel like it. Like and subscribe if you feel like it. And have yourself a wonderful day. Thanks again. Bye-bye.